everybody. This is Wendy from Wendy's Parade of Perfume. I talk about perfume here, obviously. Um, it is October 26th, so that means we are counting down till Halloween. And I am going to do my list of witches' brews. Perfumes appropriate for a witch's brew, worn by a witch. Um, I just always think of kind of stereotypical, like when you think about it, witches, they'll tend to live in like a cabin that's covered in mosses and they have an herb garden and they have a cauldron and you know they turn into a cat you know and their familiar goes flying around to get whatever it is they need or that sort of thing so that's kind of where I'm coming from I think of herbs and spices and things that they would make and things that they would wear and and the weather and the fall and I just don't imagine a witch being out in the hot weather I just think witches would prefer a cooler climate that's just what I think my uh I don't know that being said, though, my favorite witch is Witch Hazel from Looney Tunes because that woman is just happy as a clam and she's freaking hilarious and she's just so cute and funny. I just love that woman. She's so funny. Anyway, I think I'm going to start with the older and we'll go newer, relatively speaking, or at least I'll start with the oldest one. Um, I Like I said, I always think of like spices and herbs and things outside and just being able to create something something magical or medicinal or poisonous out of out of just herbs and things that grow outside. So uh, my first pick would be Gress Cabochard. I have like a million bottles of Cabochard. Um, this is from 1959, I believe. 59, 50, 59, I think. Um, so this perfume has been around for a, long, for a long time. I used to have a vintage of it, but I don't think the vintage holds up very well. If you're used to the old one, you're not going to like the new one. But Grass Cabochard has a lot of very harsh, interesting notes like uh, uh, asafoetida, uh, coriander, tobacco. There is some florals. They The florals in the heart, they're like these very dusty florals in the heart. Um, the top has bergamot and aldehydes and things like that. But this really dries down to like vetivers and sandalwood and tobaccos and spices and herbs and things like that. It's very green. This is 20 bucks. And I, you know what? The reform, it, it is what it is. It's reformulated. It's not the way it used to be. But my first pick for uh, Fit for a Witch with a little bow, apparently, <laughs> would be uh, 1959 Cabochard from Grass. Let's put it in the box. I have so many versions of this. I think this version is finally when they took all their real oak moss out. Um, it still smells pretty good, though. It's just a little bit more green and tobacco leading, leading versus my older bottles, which still have oak moss in them. So speaking of mosses and things, this is a body spray from Lush called Guardians of the Forest. And... I can't decide if I wish they would make this into a perfume, but this is for those of you that love woody green. And I especially got this because there's rosewood in here and I absolutely adore rosewood. Um, the top notes are cypress. The heart is this beautiful, stunning. Ugh, I mean, there's I mean, it's lush. So they use the real deal. It's a rosewood. And then the bottom is oak moss. And it does smell like a green forest. It smells like you're hiking on a trail. It's very, very linear. Um, it doesn't last really long because it's a body spray. Last couple hours, it's very linear. But it definitely will. If you want to be sent to a place, if you want to be sent into like the deep woods, looking for things to build your, <laughs> build your concoction to put a spell on someone, this would be it. So number two would be Guardians of the Forest from Lush. Especially, man, if you love rosewood... Oh, just beautiful. So maybe this one, I just bought this um, a couple months ago. Maybe this perfume would be a more urban witch. And she also likes to drink wine. But this is Salute from Parfums Dampier. This is their their wine fra fragrance, basically. Um, it smells like, and it reminds me of like this kind of witchy thing because it smells like the whole process of making wine. It smells like grapes it smells like grape leaves it smells like a glass of oh my god even if you smell it it smells like a glass of red wine so be forewarned if you ever try to smell it if you ever try to test this it smells like a glass of red wine it smells aromatic it does smell fruity but only from like wine fruits like grapes and raisins and things like that and the backbone is a very a very dark like woody wood wine soaked wood like uh you know a barrel that they would procure, you know cure wine in 
So I don't know. I think that maybe if uh, the witch gets a a more urban familiar <laughs> to go to town with, maybe she could wear this, the Salute from Parfum Stompier. Very different, a little bit linear, um, almost a little bit sweet because it's like raisiny and like concentrated, but I really like this. It's interesting. I just got it too, so... I mentioned this in my fall perfume list. This is another one from Lush. This is Devil's Nightcap. I mean, first of all, it's called Devil's Nightcap. This smells like Halloween night to me. I'll just kind of repeat what I said uh, previously. This is orange blossom, white flowers, clove. Oh my God. Sorry, not editing that out. I don't edit here. <laughs> but you don't have to watch any commercials here because I'm also not sponsored. Um, this is uh, and clove and over a huge bed of oak moss. There is so much freaking oak moss in here. It is absolutely insane. This smells like cold air on a fall night. This smells like being in the woods. This smells like this smells like Halloween. Um, this just and it freaking works. I highly recommend this. Uh, Devil's Nightcap Oak Moss Bomb from Lush. This is kind of a new one and kind of weird and kind of pink. This is Desert Eden from Estee Lauder. Now, I know that this bottle is so Estee Lauder and that's why I love it. It's heavy glass, it's pink, it's ridged, it looks so retro. The cap is super heavy in it. It's like nice and satisfying to go on. And it this looks like it would be some sort of like girly or even matronly like pastel like hairspray floral. This is it's not dark, but it's really rich. The The big notes in here are a rose that it kind of facilitates between being dark and spicy to and also very jammy. Um, and then there's what I really love about this is that it smells like incense and resins underneath. I think the there's supposed to be like a papanox and labdanum and things like that. So I just think of like maybe the witch has like a rose garden and she's also like burning incense and it's just smoldering because the resins used in here are are dark and smoldering. Do not let the pink juice set you uh, set you on the wrong path for what this really is. Um, and then the and it has the, it's Estee Lauder, so I I think Estee Lauder uses good stuff. And the the base is a very nice sandalwood um, with the resins on it. So woody, resinous, rosy, dark. They could have put this in like a black bottle, in my opinion, but. Pink, it's pink. It's cute. But um, Desert Eden also would be a good choice. Maybe Witchy's going to town. Okay, so speaking of roses, I don't have the box for this. This is one from Elizabeth and James. This is their Rose de May fragrance. This is very contentious, not an easy rose to wear. This is super dark and has lots of vetiver and lots of oak moss in it. And it also smells herbal and medicinal. So this is a concoction in the cauldron of like rose petals and like something camphorous and something almost minty and something dark. And it's just the, the picture in my head when I wear this, it is just, it's like roses growing on velvet because it's so dark in the background. Um, but this is still also very herbal. So herbal rose right here. Elizabeth and James Rose to my. Oh, I'm going pretty quick. I'm going to be done before I know it. Do you guys know this brand called um, Joram Studio? This is one called um, Cardus. And this is not going to be for everybody. It's, it's not, first of all, it's not sweet. But it has all these crazy notes in it. It has like, let me get this out of the way. My perfumes are growing on me here. I mean, there's like myrtle and like marjoram and like chamomile and like teas. It smells like an herbal tea. That's why it reminds me of like a witch's cauldron. Um, it reminds me of like a wool, like a, an herbal tea that's been like brewed in the woods on a campfire. It's smoky, it's woody, it's aromatic, and it has all sorts of like herbs and spices in it. It's a really cool perfume. Um, look it up. Look it up and, and look at the reviews. It's pretty neat. Uh, that would be Cardis from Joram Studio. And I don't think their prices are too scary. I don't think they make bigger than a 30 ml bottle, but ugh, yeah, and there's bittersweet things in here too, because herbs and nettles and things like that, they're not, you know, it's not sweet. 
we just live in a very sweet time period. So something like this is going to be a little shocking to most people, but um, I don't know. I like this. Um, Cardis from Dorm Studio. Let's get some old ones out of the way. This is one of my favorite perfumes of all time. Um, this is from Hubagant. It's called Aperceau, which is spelled A-P-E-R-C-U, which also means a passing glance it's in French, I think. Of course, it's in French. So not to go into a whole review of this, but this originally came out in 1925 and it was re it was reissued in the year 2000. And I think they tried to be pretty, pretty faithful to the original because this smells a lot like Mitsuko, but not as big and expansive it's a lot lighter smelling this is just a fall day in a bottle uh, there's a lot of geranium in here there's a lot of cinnamon it smells like spiced apples it smells like wilting white flowers um, the base of course because it's from 1925 it's a super cheaper base of um, like vetiver cedar oak moss that sort of thing incense this just reminds me of just being outside and being alone in the most wonderful way on a fall day. And I think that this is everything. This is not very herbal, but it's very fall-like and very concentrated. And it's really a lovely perfume. And I should probably do a full a full um, video on this. But there it is. Aperso from Hubagant. 19... Technically, I mean, these bottles are from 2000. But um, came out originally in 1925. The thing about this, too, is that this is still available on the gray market and it was never reformulated because it was kind of like on the it got issued and then they kind of discontinued it. So anything that is on the gray market is old and it's full of oak moss and all those wonderful things that this are not made in perfume anymore. And just because witches, you know, they're nonconformists. This is the original nonconformist fragrance right here. Do I need to introduce Aromatics Elixir from Clinique? Um, contentious, truly polarizing, dark as hell, herbal as hell. Just, and it's also, to me, sometimes it smells sweet because the the roses and the jasmine and the iris, they're so concentrated and dark. But this is a patchouli bomb. This is for witches just wandering out outside getting their stuff. Um, this is, if... Most people who are into perfume at least know what this is and have smelled this. Um, I don't need to say anything else because it's truly polarizing and it's not for everyone. It doesn't smell anything like what is available today. It is truly of its time, which I think this came out in 1971, so 50 years ago. But this is also one of my favorites, uh, one of my favorite cheapers and one of my favorite perfumes of all time. I do wear this all year round, but I definitely like to wear this in the fall because it is a little heavy. But that's Clinique Aromatics Elixir. So let's do the last one. Um, I mentioned this also in my fall video. I'm going to try to talk about this a little bit more. Uh, this is Mandragore from Annie Goutal. Mandragore. I believe this is discontinued, but they did, they have continued to produce um, Purple Mandragore, um, which is an eau de toilette. If Really quick, I have an Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Parfum is very, very hard to find, let alone finding this at all because it's not made anymore. From what I understand, the Eau de Toilette is a lot thinner and it lasts like 45 minutes. So if you're really interested in getting this, I would highly recommend searching down the Eau de Parfum. So this is another one. This is so... First of all, nothing smells like this. I don't have a perfume that smells like this. So when I just think about the way Mandragore smells, I don't think about individual notes. I think of Mandragore. But be that as it may, this is extremely herbal. I'm just going to put it down. You guys can look at the bottle. Um, it's really, really herbal. It opens with like mint and bergamot. It's also very spicy. There's a lot of, there's a ton of black pepper in it. And it also has like a very strong star anise and like licorice accord. So it's very herbal. It's very bright. It's very blended and it's sprinkled with black pepper. Um, there's also a lot of the heart notes, which I find to be interesting. I've never seen this combination before, are um, iris and sage. The sage adds some bitterness. The iris adds some earthiness. The dry down, I think in my other video, I misspoke and said Santa when I meant to say boxwood, um, which is kind of similar to rosewood. It's just a little bit sweeter. It's a tiny bit more powdery, but the bottom notes are, it's, a, it's like a strong boxwood. But what this, when you smell this, it smells like, 
like black pepper dusted herbs and spices um, with earthy iris and sage. And what an amazing combination. What a unique combination. What a unique creation this is. Um, but I definitely think that this is a witch's brew perfume. Halfway through, once I am done with this, I'm probably never going to be able to replace it. But I really, really adore this perfume. So I think I went through quick, but you know, you, you get the idea. If any of you want me to talk more about any of these, let me know. Um, but that's my that's my Halloweenish shorter days, longer nights, cool nights, nights for witch in witch hazel perfumes. They're all kind of spicy. They they all have something about them that just reminds me of like an herbal concoction or something that was made by hand by someone. If that makes any sense. So that's my list. On to the next thing. Halloween's like on Monday, man. I need to go get candy. I have a lot of kids in my neighborhood, so I need to buy a lot of candy for them. And I actually have bought this year, so it'll be nice. Anyway, happy Halloween, y'all. I'll see you next time. Bye.